Hey guys, so Pookie has told me you want me to teach you or show you how I make my hamburgers because I've had more than one person tell me I make the best burgers they've ever had. Like, and you know, it, it is what it is. They're not hard. It's not hard to make a good hamburger. So what I'm going to do now is going to show you what I'm using. So we've got like, so I've got a hamburger press, which makes it easier. Now you can use like, say you got some like round containers like you use to put like, you know, leftovers in. You can use those to like, you and use your fingers and mash it in and then put your stuffed ingredients in and then more on top of it and just pound it out. But this is nice. I'm going to try this. We'll see how it works out. Okay. And these are the ingredients I use. The most important ingredient is Worcestershire. Worcestershire sauce, Worcestershire, 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 however you say it. Um, is it's it's the main thing. It's the main thing, and I use the Dollar Tree Worcestershire a lot too. But this was, you know, this was what we found the other day. Um, so for my basic one, I do Worcestershire, salt, pepper. That's all you need for a decent hamburger. Now I have my special mixture I make up, and I put a bunch of different seasonings in here. Some like little chili powder, garlic, cilantro, you know, zesty stuff. I'm not gonna tell you everything because it's mine. <laughs> and then uh, we got this as barbecue spot and it says rub some rub some burger for dead cow it's kind of funny but this is really good for hamburgers and it's more of a dry rub so like you get your burgers made and then you can rub this on or you can put it in the bowl with the mix now as far as getting your burgers to stick together that's what the press is for but if you're doing it by hand sometimes it helps just to crack an egg and put it in there with it and mix it all together I don't know why it works, but for some reason it works for me. So, I guess now I'll just get started prepping some burgers. Alright, so don't be afraid. Get in there and get messy. You're gonna get, your hands are going to get messy because you got to mix all this stuff in. So now that i got it most of the way broke down, I'm going to start with just the basics. The salt and pepper and Worcestershire. This is... This is... This works perfectly. So, it you know, don't, don't be shy. Put a little in there. Especially, this is three pounds of hamburger, so you can you can get it nice and you put a lot in there. Okay, and then some salt. And I mean, a, a good cook really never. You don't measure. No. You just kind of know like that's about what I like. Mm -hmm. You know, if you like to measure, if you're real particular, you know. And I'm going to mix it up, and I'm going to look at it as I mix, and I'm like, all right, I know exactly how much seasoning I should see in the ham in a, in, a, in, a, in a bowl of hamburger when I'm getting ready to press it. So I'm like, man, that's not ready yet. I'll put it back, put some more seasoning in, roll it around. So I get it all in there. Roll it over. So now, because I need to add seasonings, I usually just use one hand so that I can pick the seasonings up with the other hand and not, you know, get all the stuff from the burgers on it. So probably gonna need a little more Worcestershire. You like it to kind of almost change the color, I, personally. I like it to just make it just a little browner than it was, personally. All right. So now, because we're doing stuffed burgers, I'm going to open up. What's the cheese that you're cheese. using? We did so three different we kinds. We did three different types of cheese. So I have a California California artisanal cheddar infused with natural smoke. So it's a smoked cheddar. So if you want to look at it, you got that at Grocery Outlet. Yeah, Grocery Outlet. They have the best cheese. So this is one of so, them. And then we got a Gouda, which is from Castillo or Castello. It's my favorite, you guys. This stuff, if you've never tried this, this is so good. This is my favorite cheese. And what's yep. that one? This is a jalapeno Havarti. So if you like a little, little spice to your burger, I prefer spice. It's uh, I like mm -hmm. Havarti because it melts really good. It melts nice and evenly and it doesn't make a mess. So, I'll oh, finish. There we go. So how do we cut the cheese? You don't want big, thick chunks, you don't, right? So That's the big I thing know, about I know a lot of, like, like we have a, here in Oregon, we have cheesy stuffed burgers, mm -hmm. and they do a gigantic burger with a big cube of cheese in the middle. I find that that, trying to do that at home for some reason, I had the hardest time doing that. So mm -hmm. what I started doing was I would cut it 
and just to kind of a not a thin slice but just a a slice like so and I would cut it once like you know I make them about that size and then I can do that or you can cut them thinner and then layer them like a star but I like to make them a little smaller like this and then if I think well maybe I should have gone a little thicker I can add a little extra cheese to it you know but I'll cut you know but like if I'm gonna do like a star I might cut it thinner like that and like lay it like so and that way the cheese gets all the way through the burger and not just right in the middle so the, see you imagine the burger around this is going to be all through it you know so you might you might do something like that inside the burger so it makes it look so like it makes so the cheese is patty. it and so it won't be a giant ball of meat on a hamburger bun you're trying not to fall apart with this will like this would get in there and the patty will still be pretty thick but it will cook more evenly because the ball ones tend to like oh there's a raw spot in there or it's not cooked all the way through if you don't like medium rare or right. rare you know if you like a well done burger you can do it with this that way because you can flip it and cook both sides and it shouldn't fall apart so then we got the good you basically just do it for each cheese so right. the same thing the, the same little thing. star so we'll just do a quick. We'll just Have we ever found quick. a cheese that didn't work in a hamburger? Um, like your basic American cheeses, especially if they got a lot of oil in them. Yeah. Like the yellow cheeses, like that, they tend to just run out. Okay. Because they they if they got like you want if you're gonna do this you want good cheese. Mm -hmm. Because it's it's kind of, it's kind of important because it you know like. The hard cheese is like this one. This is a hard cheese, and Havarti is a soft cheese, mm -hmm. and the cheddar is kind of in the middle. So I actually we've never used this cheddar, so I'm kind of curious what happens with it. But cheddars normally do okay. Swiss is melt out pretty quickly, actually. And the mixture is already made. It's just setting, so setting. you can and either just the black pepper, yeah. salt, black pepper, Worcestershire. The basic yeah. and then we're cutting the cheese right. so just cut a little cheese up and we'll cut more as we go we just i just don't want to overcut cheese mm -hmm. so this is the havarti with jalapenos in it see the, it, the havarti yeah. see it's it's soft see how it's pliable yeah it it's made to melt so so that this will melt like if there's a hole this will find a way out and then, so this would this would probably be the one that would like melt out. But they all, I mean, all the cheeses taste good inside. Mm -hmm. Nothing boils out. It's cheese. It's nothing. Nothing really goes bad. But like I say, if it's an oily cheese, that the oils tend to just run so out and they make you. a messier burger. And then so just like stay with stuff that's mostly cream, mm -hmm. like a milk cheese, not a low oil stuff like that. Because mm -hmm. if you use a lot of oil, it it messes up the the burger. Now we got the burger press. This is the first time I've used this, so this is an experiment. We're all trying this out for the first time here. So, same principle, but put some hamburger in there, like so, like that. Maybe a little more there. Make it kind of solid. And then press it down and see how it comes out. Stick. Don't stick. It's stuck. It's stuck. Did it get stuck? It did get stuck. Oh, that one didn't. This one did though, because it wrapped around. Oh, there we go. Okay, perfect. Maybe a little more. This one didn't fill up quite right. When we got this at the press at TJ Maxx for it like six like, bucks. Yeah, it was yeah. Like five and or they six do bucks. have them at the Dollar Tree, you guys. So yeah. I mean, we just saw this one and grabbed it. I was kind of interested because I've never used a burger press. Normally, I just like I say, I'll use tup like Tupperware mm -hmm. stuff that's like round, and I'll just make a burger. It, yeah, out of it. and that works great. You don't have to it go just, fancy. I thought, it. ooh, I can do two at a time. This would be nice. So especially if you have big families or if you right. have big, you know, you're having a big barbecue for the fourth or what have you. So now you so you didn't fill it all the way up, okay? Yeah. Because see, you got to put your cheese in. So now you got to put your cheese in. So let's do. 
let's see. Let's do a Havari. Like that. Just get it all nice and in the middle. Like so. And just kind of mash it down, get it in there. Like that. And it'll all melt together. I'm going to do the star pattern on this one. And kind of press it in so that it gets in there. And see how this fills up the meat like that? Makes it nice. Now, we can add more meat on top. Like that, just kind of spread it out so it should cover better. And, you know, don't, don't rip it apart when you pick it up and smash it together with your hands. That way it stays consistent and doesn't like have a lot of cracks in it. But that's why the burger press is kind of important. And, you know, I can make them by hand. It's just a pain. You know, and your hands, your hands end up greasy and messy. And... You kind of want to make sure they stay together. Let's see. I'll use a little less meat on the first one next time. Make it a little thinner. These are just your basic salt and pepper Worcestershire. So, looks like they're holding together pretty good. Yeah, that looks really good. Look at that, you guys. And the cool thing about this one is it lifts it out like so, and then you can flip it. Now let go, hamburger thing. There we go. Oh, that looks good, you guys. I like that. It's nice. So that's what it looks like. See, so the none of the cheese is coming out. Yep. That's gonna make a really that's good. A, that's a pretty hefty patty too, by the way. That's like a. That's like a. That's like a. That's not more. That's more than a quarter pound. Right. Might be a third pound patty. That's pretty good. Oh yeah, that looks really good. And. and that's a little gonna, special mix. This is my mix. This We've had people come over to the house and say, oh, okay, I'll have a hamburger, I guess. And then they end up eating like three or four of his hamburgers. No one, everybody eats more than one hamburger when they come. It's, it's right? Yeah, I have to make a lot. Like I have to over prepare a little bit. It's like, oh, you know, oh, y'all have a burger. And then like, oh, hey, you got some more of those? Those are really mm -hmm. good. How do you make those? And I'm like, shh, it's a secret. <laughs> But it's not really. I mean, it's not. You just make it the way you like it. Right. You know? I just, and honestly, I don't measure any of this really. I just know the flavors I like. Like, so there's garlic in here, there's cilantro, there's, you know, All lime zest, stuff. you know, stuff like that. Probably some chili powder in here, you know, I think. <laughs> 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 so, you mix it up real good. Again, you just put. A thin layer on the bottom, yep. cheese in the middle, and then a thin layer on top, right? Yep. And what did I use last time? I used the cheddar and the Havarti. So I'll use the Gouda this time. Okay. Alright, a little bit more meat. That's one good thing about the press too, you can kind of find out where your weak spots are too early before you throw it on the grill. You can kind of like, oop, it's cracking right there. So you can kind of work it in. And then... Okay, so now I've got, I put a little, I put, I put some new meat in here. So we're gonna use this seasoning, a little more Worcestershire. That's really good, we got this that This is really good. This, I think we got it at Lowe's. Lowe's. Mm -hmm. and they have a rack of, like anytime you go to the barbecue side, they have a rack of rub, rubs and sauces and things over there that is just like, it's it's like all of it's really good. We've tried the Santa Maria, we've tried 
just the garlic one, the, the like, you know, infused smoke one, stuff like that. But this is really good. It's literally burger and fry seasoning. So you can even like to season your fries with this. You can season anything with this. It's probably good. But well, you're, you're obsessed with anything seasoning. Anytime you go to the store and there's a new seasoning, you get excited. <laughs> yes. I'm like, ooh, new seasoning. But, like, I did a, for Father's Day, I did a brisket. Because I was like, I'm going to spend all day at the grill and make a brisket. And that's what I did. And and it was and uh, it was like literally eight hours of cooking. And I'm kind of like, oh, that was a lot. But, <laughs> it, but it turned out amazing. You know, I get I get why it's like that good, but uh, I would I don't know that I would do that again unless I was cooking a large batch, mm -hmm. like because I only cooked one brisket and it was a small brisket. It was like a well, it was a, I think it was a fifty dollar brisket, but you know, it was but I like I wanted to try it, so that's what I did. So as you can see, this one is a little darker. This, yeah, that this one has a lot more seasoning. seasoning it's got it. it's a little darker than my seasoning. My seasoning has a little more you know, lighter things in it, but this is a lot darker. And I put, I think I, I did not as much meat, and I might have over worcestershire it, but that's okay. You never have too much. Yeah, so, you know, we got a, a few different flavors. So you've got the two of my seasoning, then you got the regular just salt, pepper, worcestershire, and then you got, see how much darker these are? That other seasoning comes out a little darker. And we got a baby burger. Yeah. It was just a little bit left over. We got a baby burger. So, so how are we grilling these? What? So I, when I grill them, uh, luckily we have, we have a pellet grill, so mm -hmm. we have a pit boss and it's, it's, it's a really nice grill the, for the money. It's, it's as good as any of them out there. Um, I set it for roughly 350, and then, you know, every grill cooks differently. This one cooks like a little hotter on one end than the other. So, you know, you got, you can you can kind of like move your burgers around like, mm -hmm. oh, this one's getting a little done a little too quick. I mean, you know, whatever, but normally 300, 350. And it takes about 15 minutes to cook them. I mean, that's but that's why it's good to get them kind of flat like this and not big. No, you don't want your because, burgers round or lumpy or like right. Even. Well, and the problem is, is like this will cook more even than say your cheesy stuffed burgers that are just a big ball of yeah. meat. You know, that's at probably least in, a good... at least in my my experience. So, but there we are. I'm gonna go set my grill for temperature. We get ready to cook them. All right, well, we're about 325, so that's close enough. It's hot out here, folks. So, I'm going to scoop this guy up. Place him over here. on your grill, the better everything tastes. And we use this thing like every, every day. day. Summertime, we don't cook in the house. There we go. Start going. Don't they look delicious? They smell good, I know that. Mm, yeah. Hey you guys, so here is one of the hamburgers. We'll go ahead and cut it open and we can share with you guys what it looks like inside. Oop, lost the bun. All that cheese in there. Oh my gosh. Cook through perfectly. Look at that, you guys. That is how you make a cheesy stuffed hamburger, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Give my husband a big thumbs up for this video. And like I said, if you want him to do more cooking videos, please let us know. But seriously, you're gonna wanna try this hamburger because it is, look at that cheese. Oh, it smells so good. Thank you guys.
Talk to you guys next time.